You know, Dave, certainly here at uh, at Dimensional, I mean, we're big advocates of indexing. We know the whole history of, of David uh, working in the mid-1970s on one of the, the creation of one of the first uh, index funds. But we also know that, you know, with an indexing approach, sometimes it can be uh, a little bit rigid. And if we look back at the first part of 2020, uh, you see that really coming into play with some of the indexes in the bond market. We, uh, we did, for sure. You know, we talk about, uh, you know, robust processes. We, we use that term a lot. I hear that term a lot, a robust process. And, and, I, and I think, well, how, if somebody asks me to explain, what do you mean by robust? You know, I started out years and years ago as an engineer. And I'll, I'll tell you the way an engineer would think about that word in a process. You'd say, well, the, a process has inputs, uh, and then something happens, a machine makes something, and then there's something that, that comes out. And if there are just minor variations in inputs, and there's always going to be variations in inputs, maybe it's the stuff that you get from your supplier or maybe even the temperature of the building. If minor changes to the inputs cause significant changes to the output, well, that's not a robust process. A robust process can deal with small variations in input and give a good, stable outcome. So how would that relate to the investment process? Well, I, I, I would sort of say, well, variations in inputs, think about that as market volatility. So if you develop some process that works perfectly fine uh, in normal volatility uh, market environments, and then we go through a period of high volatility and your whole process falls apart, well, then I would say that's not a, a robust process. So we had some examples of things that you would think would be a robust process that sound very robust, like, let's say, bond indexing, for example. So you know, that seems pretty simple. Even people have been doing it for a long time. But let's go back to March of 2020, earlier this year, where it was a very, very volatile time in the market. Lots of uh, uh, activity, bid-ask spreads widen out tremendously, credit spreads widened out, wide out uh, tremendously as well. They knew what was going to happen. When they got to the normal process of that index provider reconstituting their benchmark, which they do every month then, there are certain names that drop out, very simple things often, you know, if, it gets, if the bond gets below a year, it drops out of the index and new bonds come in. Uh, if anything gets credit uh, downgraded below the, the index range, it, it gets uh, dropped out. So they knew that just a normal reconstitution was going to put so much pressure on their process. They would not be able to, to manage their process the way they normally did. And they literally went and appealed to index providers to not do their normal reconstitution, to delay it by a month to let them sort of get their arms around what they were doing. So, and the, and the index providers actually complied. They, they went along with it. So, I mean, there's an example of a process that was obviously not robust, even something as simple. You know, now again, you know, uh, even the more obvious ones that were not robust is, oh, I'm going to pick the winners or I'm going to try to time the market. Uh, you know, many of those had disastrous results uh, in the month of March. If you look at our strategies, look, we were in the exact same market, the same volatility, the same bid-ask spread widening. We were in the exact same market conditions. But our strategies held up quite well uh, through, through March and April and beyond because we built robust processes that, that could perform well and, and we could execute our strategies in periods of normal market, market volatility and in periods of high volatility. So I think in the end, that's how I view robustness. And I think uh, sometimes you have to get put to the test to, to, to back up what you're saying. We've always said our processes are robust and sometimes you have to be uh, dragged through the fire a little bit and, and we proved that we were.